And let's see who's going to get the ball first. It looks like it's going to be Niner. So you have Samoa's finest. He's in the red home uniforms. And in the white with gold pants, that is Niner. And he spins his way near the 40-yard line. He's going to be down at the 39. As you see a look there at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. Boy, this is going to be a good game. That's right. And you're going to see uh, the main focus of Niner's offense is probably going to be uh, halfback elite specialist route chemistry to Ricky Williams. That's what I'm most interested in. That's where you're going to see those. Probably the table routes being the most effective thing. Um, he also uh, tends to be a big U-trips guy out of this New England book. Uh, Boy, let's Ricky see how that's going to work out. Run, Ricky, run. That's a lot of banging around for five yards, but that'll bring up a second and five. Again, New England offense, multiple defense. You're going to see the 4-3 odd being utilized by Samoa's finest here. Wonder if he is going to take advantage of the ability to put those uh, safeties at the linebacker package. Well, Samoa's finest, you see his three-digit identifier up there, SAM. And when it comes to Niner, he just put nothing in. He put zero in. He's just, hey, I'm just uh, too competitive gaming. <laughs> that's that's, that's going to be me for, for the rest of the way. I like that. I thought it was a too cold Scorpio thing. If it, if it's, I, I see what you're going with here. And just a beautiful move, spin. Though. Definitely was. And what that is there is you're just trying to get the defender off balance. As long as you've got over 91 spin there, you're going to get a good animation and often going to uh, fake out that defender completely unless they have the unfakeable chemistry, which I do not believe either of these players do in their lineups. Well, we polled the community who they thought would win the 49ers Club Championship. Samoa's finest was last out of all four. Only 6% of the community given Samoa's finest a chance. A guy that was in the final last year. Now the 11% the Dippin' Dots got, I don't know if some of those votes uh, also went to Niner and he split his own votes or maybe some of those votes went to Playbook and he had to split them three ways. <laughs> Second and 11 at the 42. Nick in the gun. Looking downfield. And nearly overthrew it, but what a grab. Able to haul it in at the 35. And that's going to bring up a third and four. Kittle with a one-hand grab. The high pass. And you see great job there of taking away two routes with the user, but the high pass mechanic is what becomes the biggest problem there. Goes over the top, sneaks it in. Third and four. Be a 52-yarder from here. Can't take a sack. What did I tell you? You told him not to take a sack, Scott. There's the Forrest Buckner. 49er fans will know that name. Now, if you watch that replay, you see him sneak in that little gap there. He told me that his main defense was a stunt with his defensive tackle. The reason he's got DeForest Buckner at defensive tackle, he's the tallest and the skinniest, and he tends to squeeze through those holes. I didn't believe him, and he just showed me on the first drive that that's a real defense. A fourth and 12, seeing his believing. Rolling opposite way for Vic. Sets his feet and has a man, a diving catch all the way down at the 10 yard line for Randy Moss. My greatest of all time, Randy Moss on a crossing route. You just let him get behind that defense. You give Vic way too much time there, and that's even Vic without the gunslinger. So he has to have even more time. Rolls unnatural to his body, rolls to the right side, sets his feet, fires it. That's fighting words when you're talking about 49er fans, not mentioning Jerry Rice, and that's a touchdown for Randy Moss. The former Marshall Thundering Herd hauls it in. And a early 7-0 lead. Take a look at it again. Another high pass mechanic here. You're going to have to put a lot more people on Moss than one. Uh, it's zone coverage in the red zone, not going to get it done against that man. So now Samoa's finest is going to have an opportunity to answer. It'll be his first touch of the football here with 2.03 to go in the first. Great opening drive there by Niner. Definitely was. And I mentioned a little bit about that uh, DeForest Buckner at D-tackle being what uh, Samoa's finest was going to rely on. On the opposite side of the spectrum there, Niner spent 35 cap specifically on the tip drill chemistry. He has five players with tip drill, one of them being a middle linebacker that he can put on the line of scrimmage, blitz him, get the tips at the line of scrimmage, and then rely on the four behind him to cause havoc. It's going to get a little scary if Samoa tries the high pass. Vic gets it to Jones. That'll pick up five. 
For some reason, this already feels like a big drive. I know it's the first time he's touched the football, but after the weight niner went down the field, feeling a little pressure here. Thick, nice job, a little wheel coming out of the backfield. It's Fournette, and that's up around midfield at the 48-yard line. And Fournette is one of the few options he has on the field without any chemistries. He's got two wide receivers with uh, Julio and Moss that both have the elite specialist uh, for their route running. Uh, nothing to the Fournette. However, he uh, throws the wheel out of the backfield, and he's wide open up the seams. Got to watch for the corner here. And he'll just get it to Dion. But Dion's got a block in front of him, spins away from another. And already he's in the 39-yard line, so... Couple nice back-to-back -back plays. And what he did there was exactly what I thought he was going to do. He just worried about that corner route. You don't want to get beat 45 yards upfield. You'll take the eight-yard eight, eight yard in routes. You don't necessarily rely on the spin moves there. Dion, wide open. I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, just he, a breakdown in coverage. There was no one over there. He ran a little wheel, as you can see him. I mean, there's nobody. Uh, he, I think he, maybe he accidentally manned up that uh, inside corner to the A receiver, which left nobody, no no deep third, nobody on the outside. Go, go, go. So first and 10 in the red zone here. Trailing by a touchdown is Samoa. Looking, looking, and he'll force it in there. So a nice little playmaker, and then he lets it rip. And that's your standard playmaker there. No playmaker Kim's on the field, so those playmakers are going to take just an extra second to develop. They don't throw their hand up immediately and get the movement. Second and four. A delay to Fournette. Trucks one and carries another down to the three-yard line. And Randy Moss on the opposite side is catching touchdowns. On this side, he's crack back blocking and picking up an extra five yards for his running back. So now first and goal from the three, and... Boy, that first quarter flew by. And we're already moving into quarter number two, and you can see how big this is for Samoa's Finest. Yeah, Samoa's Finest, more of a ball control offense kind of guy. He wants to milk the clock. He's the kind of guy that wants to put a drive together. It's going to take an entire quarter even. He's, He's got Fournette. Fournette picks up two. So now we got a first and goal from the one. It's a full one. And this is the toughest yard to get. And football in general and especially so in John Madden football uh, maybe say second and goal from the one and a half now during ladder play Samoa's finest only averaged seven runs per game so if we see three runs here at the goal line that's well, pretty much half his quota you got Michael Vick and he gets it done pinning the PAT we're going to be tied at seven so a great job answering that first drive by Nina by Samoa's finest. He's talking to himself. He's feeling it. Always curious to see which players will kick deep, which players are worried about that. Well, they need to be worried about that man right there, number 21, Deion Sanders, and that's why you don't kick it deep. Prime time had one man to beat and gets forced out at the 44. And you almost wonder there when you put your GM hat back on, you know, if I had just put that return specialist, Kim, on Dion, he would have lost no stamina because I didn't get touched. I didn't do any special moves. It's I would have been up it. the sidelines. It's not worth it. Trust me. Didn't want to give up those 15 cap. Uh, Ricky Williams gets caught up in the backfield. That's going to be a loss of three. Second and 13. Yeah, Gersh, I just think you can't afford. I mean, hindsight's always 20-20. But you can't afford that, that chemistry. Especially you're talking salary cap. That's valuable cap points. Uh, to be able to put some of those Kims on. And here's a huge sack that just got it away. Was lucky that wasn't a sack. When he, he was in a wind-up motion. They're going to say that was incomplete. That was huge. Just got caught looking downfield while naturally dropping back. It's, a, it's something that my, even myself as a Madden player, I do way too often. I catch myself looking downfield and not realize I'm just dropping back naturally by holding that stick down on your thumb. Got caught there. Lucky it's only third and 13. It could have been third and 30. Fires and across his body it. into triple coverage, and it's just barely overthrown. It's going to bring up a fourth and 13. Not only did he throw into triple coverage, wasn't set, threw across his body, and probably helped him out there because his feeder said he may throw it directly to the safety. 
So it's going to be fourth down. He needs 13. He needs to get to the 34-yard line to keep this drive alive in a tie ball game. Trying to move to the final. Trying to represent the 49ers. And Moss can't hold on. It'll be a turnover on downs, and Samoa's finest will get it back. Samoa's finest is going to get the ball at midfield here. What he did here was flood the right side with zones, knew that the crossers were going to come, had people there for everything, and I think maybe uh, that Niner may have had two routes too close to each other there. He had two crossers that didn't really give each other any separation, so it allowed the three people there to guard every route. Well, he's got, a, he's got RB wide open, and he can't get it to him. Only gets one down there. Maybe if he still had some college eligibility, we would have gave him the catch. It's an incomplete here in John Madden. So 10 to go here on second down. And then bunch to the wide side here when you see some pressure coming from both sides. Tip. And there it is. Tip drill activated. And that was 14 cap worth of tip drill right there. That's one tip and a pick by another one. And that's when the chemistry's just come to help you more than anything. I told you guys at the beginning of the game that this man has 35 cap dedicated to simply the tip drill chemistry, and it's already got him one turnover. Let's take a look at this one more time. You see Vic forcing it, and it's an easy interception. I'm not even sure tip drill even mattered right there. Now, two men came in for the pressure. Just great defense on not only in the front seven, but in the back four as well there. Going to bring up a second and 11 here for Niner. And Ooh. threw it right at the user, and there's a big hit. That's Khalil Mack tracking back. It's going to bring up a third and seven. You see 52 making hits like that for the San Francisco 49ers. You get a few Pat Willis flashbacks. Yeah, one of the greats. Definitely one of the greatest Madden linebackers of all time. You give me somebody with 90 speed, 90 hip power, and he makes all my runs. Well, I think if you go with 52 in Madden, you got to be talking about Ray Lewis. And that's going to be a first down. It's going to move the chains right at the 43-yard line. And one thing, I'll stick up for Ray. Even being a Redskins fan, I'll stick up for Ray here, even though he's a Raven great. He never got the respect, I feel like, from the speed-wise on Madden. As you see him float that into a little window there. I believe he may have uh, pass led that down uh, and inside just so he could get that animation. And none of the corners would have a play on Well, it. because of Ray Lewis, we have a thing called the hit stick that debuted in Madden 2005. Remember, 04 was all about the playmaker. Mm -hmm. You had Vic. He was doing his thing, going nuts. And the... The defensive folks said, hey, 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 you got to give us a few features That's right. here. Oh, for Vic, when you could turn the passing icons off, use your <laughs> sprint button and get the icons right back on. And then the next year, Madden 05, I fell in love with the diving hit stick. One of our uh, EA commentators, RG, had one of the greatest diving hit sticks that we had seen in competitive Madden. It was huge. It totally changed the game. Here's second and 10. Play clock running down. We're going to have a two-minute warning. And I don't know if the two-back look there was because he knew he wasn't snapping the ball and he just wanted to make Samoa's finest think. Uh, was he actually going to come back and come out in two-back? I like the chess match, the brain game that some of these players yeah, play. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to fool anybody, right? Because when, when they have the little thing at the bottom that says how many wide receivers and mm -hmm. running backs, you're, yep. you're not fooling. I guess there, it, it could have been an eye formation. Yeah, just with, give me a chance to audible. New England, one of the few books that gives you the ability to the audible out of the shotgun two back into an I-form pro. Maybe could have been the look he was given there. Maybe could have been setting some up for later in the game. Well, here's a big third and four in a tie ball game as Vic uses his legs here. And a good job by the, uh, the Tyreek Hill who became a lead blocker at the end of that play. Helped him pick up an extra two yards, make it third and manageable instead of third and long. A little over 90 seconds to go in the half. Both our competitors with all three timeouts. Another one of those U-trip looks that Niner says he's very comfortable with. And Vic is going to go downfield, knocked away at the last minute by Dion. And he just made the wrong read, in my opinion, there. He had a corner route on the left side of the field that was going to be wide open. It had got behind one zone and in front of the other one. He tried to force a high pass to the seam. Boy, and this is a big kick here. This is deep. 53-yarder, and it's good. 
18 cap kicker from both of these competitors today. Uh, neither one of them went with the minimum 10 cap kicker, so you will get a few more kick power, a little more kick accuracy out of that as well. Seen that come into play, especially in Madden 19. And we're going to start the drive from the 22. We got 75 seconds to go in the half. This is very important for Samoa's finest because he's going to get the ball to start half number two. Even a three here would be big. Definitely. You get a chance to get your George Costanza on. You can double dip the chip. He's got all three of his timeouts. He doesn't have to rush himself. He also tends to be a, a little bit of a slower player, kind of slow rolls if, you, if you, uh, we're in Vegas. I know there's a lot of poker pros here. Let's see if he can keep that going. Well, wide open is Dion, and he overthrew him. Again, without the gunslinger also throwing across your body, also without setting your feet. You saw Samoa in the bottom right there disgusted at that last throw. I think he had a little more time. I think he was mad at himself more than anything. And there's the scream and a one-hand grab by Sharp. He reached behind him and hauled it in for the first down. And held on to it after the hit stick as well. Reached behind himself. I'd like to see how he got behind the... Okay, so there were no zones on that side on the... Uh, Looks like just a deep blue and maybe a flat that was underneath it. He just went and found the vacancy. It's a cat and mouse game in some of these defenses. Niner sometimes loads up in the middle of the field. Sometimes he tries to guard those sidelines. You know, I still don't know which was Tom and which was Jerry. I have no clue. Is this real? I couldn't tell you which was which. Are you real? Are you serious? I have no playmaker chemistry on me right now. This is real. <laughs> Do you know? Yeah, I'm going to let you okay, stew on it. Right. I got about cartoons. I've got you want to get you to talk about cartoons. Boy, I'm all in. Second and ten. Dion looks like he's one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see. Does he take it? He's got him beat. Go. You got to let it go to X here. And Dion holds on at the 13. That was great. He recognized that one-on-one -on -one ten seconds before he snapped the ball. Got to take advantage of that. Not too often are you going to see Dion left one-on-one -on -one with a corner. He's inside the red zone now. Under 30 seconds to go in the half for Net. He's got three timeouts. And Niner's going to use another one of his. And it only took him about 10 yards before he beat him. And he may have even been able to wait a little bit longer, and he could have got a few more yards of separation and could have turned that into six. Instead, Niner gets a chance to use two of his timeouts so far. Still got one in his back pocket, looking to hold him to three here. He's going to get that final timeout at a niner now. So now he's in control of these last 21 seconds. He's got a third and eight. Now he can't from, get too conservative here. I know, I, I know what he's trying to do from trying to not eagle, give eagle. Niner a chance here, but eagle, eagle. he's almost playing for three right here. Yeah, running the ball still an option here. He wouldn't have to hurry up to get his field goal team out or anything like that. 21 seconds is plenty of time. And he'll run the wheel to Fournette. He didn't get it. He did not get it. It's going to be fourth and one, and now you do have to kick it. He can't believe that spot. And maybe if you just power up Fournette one more time, that is not the full power up on Fournette, you maybe get a fall forward. You get what I've always called the Brandon Jacobs animation. Brandon Jacobs was the greatest fall forward running back in the history of Madden. 6'6", six, six, and it seemed like he was about 400 pounds when he was on the gridiron. 10-10. to 10. These guys are trying to get to the final, the face suspect, and the winner of that will represent the San Francisco 49ers at EA headquarters. Brand new Madden studio dedicated to Madden. And it'll be the home of Madden probably for many years to come. So I'm excited to see that, and one of these... Guy's going to have the opportunity to represent the 49ers out there. Maybe get their hands on that 100 grand. 700 grand in total. It all gets kicked off on January 30th. Not too far from now. That's right. For the first time ever, we will have a brand new San Francisco 49ers club champion. That's right. Monsta losing in semifinal number one if you just join us. So Suspect is waiting in the final. And we haven't got any closer to find out who's it going to be. 10 to 10. And this is a gigantic opening drive of the second half for Samoa's Finest. Back to his reliable bunch here. Haven't seen anything too crazy out of his offense. I don't know if maybe he's saving something for a two-point conversion. He told me there were multiple wrinkles in this offense. Good playmaker there. Just didn't get it off in time. Yeah, Vic will throw it away, and that'll bring up a third and ten. 
Boy, one thing you can't do is go three and out, four and out here to open up the half in a tie-tie ball game here. Yeah, you've got to let that momentum continue on your way. You got your points before half. You got your chance to get your points again. Even if it's only three, you've got to get some points on the board here. He hasn't had a lead yet. Yeah, I felt he was really conservative at the end of the half. I mean, he did a good job. If it worked out for him, you'd say he's a genius. Uh, but certainly ran out of time there. Didn't want to chance that fourth and inches. Still had all three of his timeouts, too. Here's a third and ten. Trying to run away from the pressure. And then, whoa, it's going to be dropped. That is a dangerous throw across your body there. Sends one more from the left side than the offense was able to block. Smart to be able to send it from the left side because that takes away the natural rollout ability of Michael Vick. Michael Vick being a left-handed quarterback always bothered myself as a Madden player because I, I want to roll out right Great every punt. single time, which is the same thing it seems like Samoa's finest wants to do even though he has that left-handed quarterback. I'm sure the left-sided pressure is helping that. Yeah, he's bringing it from the for the quarterback's strong side, which is Michael Vick being left-handed. So after the great punt, it's going to be first and 10 from the 21. Ricky Williams will run over one. And he'll pick up a strong eight or nine yards. It's going to be second and two. Takes a lot to run over a man like Sean Taylor like that. That's a grown man hit stick from Ricky Williams. Ball now at the 30. Got to watch trying to take the lead here. Got to watch out for Reek on a wheel route here. Eagle, eagle. Second and two is a great time to take a shot deep. He's got the proper alignment out there for him as well. Keeps Ricky in the block. We'll just pick up the first down with Tyree Kill. Boy, when we hear for the classic, I mean, Tyree Kill was a game changer. You put those legends on the field, you put some of those fast guys, he went to be in salary cap. He just looks like a normal wide receiver out there. Corners get a little faster. Uh, Unnecessary spin there. Didn't get the, the receiver to, or the defender to fake out whatsoever. And instead of picking up any rack, Boy, look at just this. gets hit. Getting run heavy. And picks up a few out to the 42. They can say it's a gain of four. So nice job falling forward. Interesting to see Samoa's finest only ran the ball seven times a game in the ladder, and he has been very run heavy so far this tournament. I wonder, does that make him more comfortable? I wonder, is that more of a, a something he saw in the defensive alignment from 49er? Either way, it's got him in a good position. 10-10, he's got a chance to get a stop here. Even better with that sack. It's going to be third in California. Hey, Khalil Mack gets in there once again. He's got one and a half sacks now, and... Boy, I tell you, Vic with just nowhere to go. That's going to bring up a huge third and 16, all the way back at the 32-yard line. Samoa really needs to stop here. 4-3 look here. Looks like maybe another one of those block shed defenses. I don't anticipate him actually blitzing anyone here. Wouldn't be surprised if he sent four and dropped seven. Right yard, partner. Vic stands tall, though, has a man downfield. There's Julio. All the way down to the 36-yard line. And you talk about finding an empty space in a zone. There was no one over that field there. He gets caught following the crossing route from right to left a little long on his user, which just vacates the entire right side of the field. And yeah, didn't trust his AI that was sitting over there on the left side of the screen. And he could have given up that pass. I don't even think even with that crossing route that it would have been a first down. Nice patience there by Niner. We've also got a much better chance on that shorter route of a hit stick. Hey, it's cause a fumble. We've seen the ball touch the ground once this game. Just didn't change hands. So a second and six at the 32. Up under center. Ricky in the block again, and he'll hit Kittle the tight end to the 28. It's going to make it 31. That was either double man coverage on Kittle or man coverage with a three wreck behind it. But either way, Kittle had more people on him than he's probably ever had in real life there. And does a great job of guarding the drag. Picks up five, third and short. Especially for Kittle to get away from Jones. Jones looked really slow. When he's not being usered, Jones looks really bad out there. Third and one. If no one sees it, Kittle may have had the greatest post-game press conference before he had to get to a WWE pay-per-view. 
maybe in history. Wide open over the middle, and Moss will power his way in there for six. That's a bad man right there. You never want to give him the extra point too early. 17-10, Niner. And let's see how that seam was just so wide open. Ah, that's the elite specialist right there. He gets him on a little skinny post. Going to be hard to guard that. About the only thing that's going to guard that in this mode is your manual user. And as many little routes as he's throwing, he's making him worry about that way too much. That's good play calling right there. Well, Samoa's finest once again down a touchdown. We're going to mark it at the 29 with 109 remaining in the third. Let's see if he can answer the Niners score once again. Now you got to worry about a cover two bomb here. Well, he rolls toward the pressure. And that time the fade got picked up by both the deep routes. Moss did end up open, just not enough time. Great pressure from Niner there. Second and ten. Vic now. And there's Randy. Holds on at the 43. That'll be a new set of downs. Had pressure right up the middle. Running back picked it up. Just perfect time there. Just barely grabbed that defender before he was able to make a play on the quarterback. Snuck it in a window. I there. love that route last year. I love it more this year. The Skimbo special. Absolutely. Maybe even the Jay Wall special this year. <laughs> Put some respect on that man's name. Yeah, we'll see him next week at the club championship. Maybe representing those New England Patriots. I have not seen Vic this contained without pressure for a long time. This is a great job of him mixing in blitzes, mixing in coverage, uh, even sometimes sending defenders only from the weak side because he's rolling out weak side so much because he's he not just, comfortable. Yeah, he needs to just stand tall in the pocket. We haven't there seen him do go. it once. That's the first time all game we've seen him do that, and it just so happens to lead to a first down. Yeah, stop worrying about getting outside the tackles. Just stand in there and fire. Yeah, it's, it's almost as if he's trying to get outside of the tackle to help out those crossing routes, help out those the deep posts, the skinny posts, whichever version he's got them on. Uh, and he's just getting ahead of himself on these reads. Yeah, until I see some pressure up the middle, I think you're fine. It, I mean, your guards are picking up the loop. No one's open. Look at the user defender. He's going to pick it off. He baited that pass. That man shopped at Cabela's before he walked in. He discarded two streaks with one player, ran away because he knew he was throwing it to the outside receiver. That's professional bait. So after the turnover, that's the heck of a way to end the quarter. The user control on this. You got to bring this guy this. back. You got to bring X back towards you. Oh, watch him bait and just run to the A receiver because he knew he was going to throw it outside. Made the perfect bait. I know the catfish fit ponds are good here in Vegas, and I might have to go somewhere with my man Niner. Are they really? They are. I've seen some monsters. I know some people with Millennial. They've got some pictures that'll show you. All right. Didn't, didn't expect Vegas to be a fishing town. Eagle, eagle. Eagle, eagle. Second and 12. I'm from the, I'm eagle, from the eagle. south, man. We, we, got, we got real lakes. We don't, we, we, we let God make them. We, did, we didn't have to make anything. We just, we let him do that. I'm from Indiana and we've got great <laughs> corn if you ever need <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I'm okay with the corn. I need a lot of the corn, especially if the, that, the beef is eating the corn. Then I, I sound <laughs> really good. Man, what, Michael Vick has been really tough. And like you said, he's finally starting to uh, stay in the pocket more, which is opening up so much. That, him just staying in that pocket the extra three seconds opened up the middle of the field. He was able to run up. Chance to make this a two-score game with less than four minutes to go in the fourth quarter here. He has been waiting to be in this position for three years now. It's been a long run. Been a long ride. No monster waiting in the final. It's suspect who had a three-point win over Monster. It was a 13-10 ball game. And we got another tight one right here. Samoa needs a turnover. In the worst way right here. Uh, even just stopping him to three, just, you can't give up a touchdown here. A touchdown is an absolute backbreaker. Over 9,000 tight ends in there. And Ricky Williams falls to the 21-yard line. So we're going to have a third and four. 
Now, this is where you question yourself if you're Samoa's finest. Do I sell out to the run because I expect him to run the ball because he knows he's going to get an extra 40 seconds off the clock that way? Does he know that I'm thinking that I know that I have to sell out to the run so he's just going to hope for the run commit and throw a quick fade for a touchdown? It's the chess versus checkers here. Multiple hot routes from Vic. He's either showing off the conductor or just making he's, him think. He's going to get a delay of game, and that's going to push him back five yards. That's a huge five yards, third and nine. Also stops the clock there. Free timeout for Samoa's finest. So he needs to get to around the 17-yard line to keep the drive alive and, more important, keep double, the double, clock double. moving. Why? Why trips instead of you trips? And Vic will hit Ricky Williams on the backfield. He'll break a tackle. That's a first down. That might be the game. Run, Ricky, run. Might have just won this man another $2,000 and a shot at the San Francisco's club championship. Boy, Ricky Williams just fighting through it. Made one man miss. Got by another and picked up the first down. It's going to be first and 10 at the 12. And what you saw there was four routes on one side of the field and only a single user defender. That's just not good numbers if you're Samoa's finest. Using the entire play clock. This time he'll toss it out to Ricky. Ricky will cut it back. And he'll fall down at the eight-yard line. That's his 13th carry as Jason Taylor has to come over and make the stop, second and six. You expect Niner to dip into his favorite dessert here. It's milk and cookies time. He's going to bring this clock down to one second every time before he snaps because he knows that this is his game to lose. Well, he got the two-minute warning coming up. He can't get there on this play. Going to have to snap. I formation. Tosses it to the outside. Ricky, nowhere to go. He'll lose two yards. And that'll take us to the two-minute warning. It'll be third and eight. I just hope that he's on conservative. I would hate to see someone fumble the ball there in a position where you don't have to run out wide. Hey, like you could that. have a scoop and score in a tie game. You got to be careful here. Would be an incredible time for a fat guy touchdown. He just moved conservative. I, he just adjusted just now. it. Yeah. It's, you could just kind of tell by the way he broke that last tackle that he wasn't on it and might have got a break there. You got to figure he. You got to figure on the opposite side of that. There, Samoa's finest is going to be on aggressive tackling. He's going to be on aggressive stripping. And he almost sacked the quarterback on a, a toss right there. All right, so here's fourth down. Smart not to use a timeout here. Definitely, those 40 seconds are much more important when you have the ball and stopping the clock than it is on before getting the stop here. So he's going to run this all the way down to about 126. Could we have a Jay Bird young give? Boy, a block field goal here would be. He's on one of those eligible players. Left side of the field. Doesn't quite get the jump. And he's going to go up two possessions. So 20 to 10. 90 seconds to go. Samoa's Finest has all three timeouts. Now, in this situation, if I'm Samoa's Finest, I just want to score before the 45-second mark. I don't care if it's three. I don't care if it's six. I know I have to have points on the board, and I got to have about 45 seconds left to give myself a chance to get this stop. Yeah, I'm you, trying to score yeah. without any timeouts being used whatsoever. It's going to have to be quick. Bunch to the right. Fournette and to the left. That safety's a little shallow on the left side of the field. I maybe try Dion, and he doesn't even have Dion on a deep route. But there was only one but defender. But he does have Randy down there, and the aggressive catch will fall to the turf. I don't love the play call. He only had one defender and a deep third on the left side of the field. He had prime time for a chance to go one-on-one. -on -one. We've seen prime time whoop people this game already in that situation. You're, you're, it's a desperate time there. I want to see a shot downfield. Again, one safety deep. We've got to go up top. He flips the bunch. Vic. That's plenty of time. Not that much time. And that sack may do it right there. Rolls out the wrong way. Rolled out for no pressure. I think he's in his own head at this point. 
absolutely no pressure there whatsoever. There was no reason to move that quarterback. Third and 26 now. Coming up on a minute to go. Down 10. X is going to be wide open. And he, no, that time he's time a pressure. Ever, he got a little block shed. Mm -hmm. That was the pressure, or else Dion had six points. Margus Hunt, the big man. Six, I saw that man in a grocery store when he played for the Colts. He was in front of me. And first of all, he was buying about $500 worth of groceries. And second of all, he's a giant. That was like a day's worth. I think so. This is it. Fourth and 35, and that's the ball game. And 49er has gotten one step closer to getting all the way over the hump. He lost in the semis, uh, in the quarters. For yeah, to Samoa year. by seven. It was yeah. a 27 to 20 game a year ago. He's bounced back from that. And he's going to have a chance against Suspect to grab himself the 49er belt on the way to the Madden Club Championship belt. And there's another knee. Uh, back in Madden 17, uh, he actually lost in the quarterfinal. They had eight players competing, unless it's Scheman, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Bam. Uh, but this time he's moving on. It'll be Suspect and Niner yes. in the 49er Madden 19 Club Championship, and it's going to be a good one.